Hey, what's up guys? I'm in New York right now, and since we're in New York, we have to check out the Manhattan Aquarium. I hear a lot about this place, and this is the first time I'm here. Really great selection, price seems pretty good. Uh, I like the fact that the salt water and fresh water, so I'm gonna check it out. It's a really cool tank because there's so much going on. Lots of goldies, lots of uh, rock flower nems. Just look at those, every single crevice there's something going on. Lots of twin spot gobies. We see some anemone crab. And I have a set of twin spot gobies. And we got some pom pom crabs up here. I've never seen that type of snails before. Since we're in the nano tank challenge, this is a really cool nano tank they got. I think the moonlight just kicked on, so it's really blue. But check out the overhang. And actually, if you look at these guys, these are the Ecosphere, I believe. I actually did a video on these guys. Uh, really cool. Wait, I know that guy. <laughs> Where have I seen him before? All right, so we know Manhattan Aquarium is a huge fan of the Triton method. Dude, look at this. Or the Core 7, all hooked up. I guess this is a really nice, kind of like a demo unit, a demo system for a reef tank. It's even hooked up to an uh, auto-doser as well. Oh, sorry, auto-feeder. And I bet you they got the uh, leak detection hooked up to the system as well. And this is obviously a Red Sea. Really cool, good stuff. Look at this clam, man. I'm still looking for a nice clam. Guys, check out that Space Invader Pectinia. See, I know how to pronounce it now. That looks awesome. It's a crazy big piece. Got some really nice uh, Pico planted tank as well. Really cool. And obviously, we got some really nice shrimp tanks. And I'm going home with five of these uh, cherry shrimps from Taiwan. Shout out to Taiwan. All right, guys, just got out of the uh, Manhattan Aquarium. Uh, it was tough finding parking because like, it seems like the entire area is fenced off uh, for police officers. But really cool experience, really nice and clean store. I like the fact that it's marine stuff as well as freshwater stuff. We picked up some cherry shrimps. We got five of them. Uh, whoever is working there tell me that they should go okay with ghost shrimps. We'll try it out. This is uh, crossing our fingers for them. So we'll see how it goes. Yeah, I really, I think like one thing that's really cool is that they have a lot of small inverts and little fish uh, in those uh, nano or pico tanks. So this kind of is like a paradise for people who are trying to keep like a desktop nano tank. Which kind of makes sense because New York is not a lot of space so I figure a lot of people probably have small tanks. So it's a really cool experience and I'm really glad to finally be able to check out the Manhattan Aquariums. Okay! <laughs> hey, what's up Reefers? Today we are going to talk about GSP or Green Star Polyps. A lot of you guys have been asking about this coral that I have in the 17 gallon dropout tank. It is pretty much a centerpiece for this tank. Uh, again, thanks to CJ for the idea of covering the bottom. <laughs> so basically I have GSP growing at the bottom of the tank up here and then now I'm trying to grow it at the bottom of the tank. And within this year and a half, I kind of got a sense of like what works for them and what not. So really quickly, basic stat. GSP, super invasive. A lot of people say that if you add GSP to the tank, make sure it's on a separate rock on an island, not touching the main structure because it's gonna crawl onto the rock. As featured here, let me just show you the kind of damage a GSP can do. You see how the back of the rock, the GSP is kind of like crawling onto the main, rock, main structure. And come on this side. On this side, it's a little bit more obvious. Right there, 
you see how the GSP is kind of like engulfing the Zoas. It's actually got onto the rock. So that is actually what I'm trying to fix today. I'm trying to get these GSP off the rock and off the back. And I'm gonna show you a little bit later in this video. But for now, let's talk about GSP care. For Green Star Palo, they seem to like medium light to high light and medium, low, uh, medium flow to high flow. I mean, this sounds really vague, but let me explain a little bit. So for a while, the flow here is pretty high. And the, down, the flow here before I added the MP10 is pretty much dead. There's almost no flow. And as a result, the GSP almost did not spread at all, even though the light is hitting it. But ever since I added the uh, MP10 and we started getting a little bit more flow, the GSP has really, really started taking off. And as you see over here, under heavier flow, it just spread so much faster. So my experience in this tank, they definitely prefer high flow. They can actually take a lot more flow than I thought possible. And in terms of light, I do, I do see that like as long as you kind of acclimate the coral to a higher light, they do prefer higher lights. So when I say between medium to high light, if, if possible, go for higher light. That is assuming that you actually want to grow the GSP. Same thing with okay. flow. Usually the flow should be, uh, this is actually, I, get, I think the filter is all cl uh, clogged up. That's why there's not much flow down here. But usually you see the GSP kind of getting blasted and that's when they're the happiest. So if you want to grow a GSP, high, medium to high flow, medium to high light. In this tank, I have the issue of the GSP kind of growing onto rocks, going to the back of the, uh, the tank. So I'm going to start fragging them back. And that is actually another question a lot of you guys ask. Like, how do you keep the GSP from growing onto the main rock structure, right? I can't. <laughs> a lot of people say that maybe you can put some like mushrooms or frog spawn along the perimeter to, so the mushroom and frog spawn will sting the GSP as they get close. But that is not the kind of scape I'm trying to go for. I'm trying to go for something a little bit more clean. I'm trying to go for like a main structure here with GSP at the bottom. So as a result, in terms of maintenance, I do have to frack them back as they start approaching the parameters. And obviously over the holiday break, you see that I have failed my duty. That's why it's kind of getting under the rock. And that's what we are trying to fix today. Now in my arsenal of tool, I have razor blade, which is a little dangerous to use in a acrylic tank because acrylic scratch so easily. So that is the last result. But uh, for the ones, <laughs> Four on the back. Yes, that's my driver license card. Check Do you my drive? <laughs> oh, you are so young. I am young. What are you talking about? I'm 19. <laughs> uh, so were. in the back of the tank, I'll try to use a cart to scrape them off first. And for the for the GSP that kind of got onto the rock, in the past, I have had good luck using tweezers just kind of peel it off. I just kind of scrape it off like this, especially because I am using. Uh, Pukini rock, which is really soft and it kind of gets scraped, they can break really easily. So I can scrape off even the rock really easily. But because such a large chunk got onto the rock, I'm not sure how that's going to play out. I'm hoping that they will come off like a mat, but we will see. So let's get started. We're going to frag some GSP. I'm going to do the easier one first, just scraping it off the back of the overflow. Let's go. Okay. Okay, guys. So usually what I like to do first is use the razor blade to cut the edge. So we know where the brick point is. So let me do that first. And before we go, I, I normally put a bag of tr uh, carbon in the, in the overflow. Mm -hmm. Because like as you cut GSP, they may release some kind of nasties, like toxin and stuff like that. What? Uh, so I, my oh my, that may affect other corals. Uh, so I have a small bag of carbon running in the back, extra carbon. So let's go ahead do and Do you actually need a glass? No, not these ones. So I tried to irritate them first, so they will shrink. Another great thing about GSP is that, um, at, as a bottom, is that they actually trap a lot of detritus. So all the dirty stuff get trapped there and stuff floating around. So I'll just siphon them once in a while, and it's actually quite nice. And this is probably a month and a half of growth. Mm -hmm. It was able to crawl back onto the back wall and just started growing, expanding vertically. And once it get onto the surface, it grows a lot faster. So I think like within three or four months, it's probably gonna come all the way up here. But before that happens, I like to keep the back wall clean. So I'm gonna frag it back. So let's go ahead and- Can you uh, shave the <laughs> So we're gonna go ahead and just slice this guy right here. And again, I'm using razor. And I'm, I'm using a razor because like this at a corner, so I don't mind. But obviously if you're trying to do a flat surface, don't do this with an acrylic tank. You're gonna scratch it up. Here's the fun part. We're gonna go in with a uh, driver license or your credit card and tell your wife. And then we're gonna scrape the back off. 
Now the, the newer pieces near the edge is really thin because it's not really built in, it's not really grown in yet. So they may rip, they may come off a little bit weird. But as I go deeper, it'll be easier to come off because it's a little bit thicker. So let's go ahead and scrape these guys out. <clears throat> See how it's kind of coming out in one single piece? Like this? So that is a mat of GSP. So fragging GSP back from overflow, any flat surface is really, really easy. You just take a credit card or whatever ID card you have and just kind of scrape them off and that's that. And you see that I, because I made the cut with the razor, it's a clean cut coming out. I don't think I cut that good down here, but I was able to. I'm able to peel them. There you go. So here's our GSP mat. Look at this. Wow. This part looks like I may be able to just peel it off. Somewhat hard. But now I want to address this. This is the tough one that I'm really worried about. I'm not sure if I can get it off. So Let's see. I'm gonna go for. I may end up just like ripping it. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. I'm gonna use this to just see if I can peel it off. Chances are it's gonna just come into lots of little pieces. It's gonna be a really messy. It's gonna take an hour. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> these are these are so new, so they're really thin. That's why they rip oh. so easily. Which is fine, I'm just trying to get them off the rock, so I'm not trying to save any of them per se, like that large piece. I'm just trying to like scrape them off the rock or anything. Okay. But these pieces, they're just too, too thin. <laughs> Bless you. Excuse me. Bless you. Bless you. Ow, excuse me. Alright guys. Let this be a lesson for you all. So I lost the battle of the GSP. Uh, the reason being, if you want to come in here. So I was hoping to peel this off as a mat, but it was not grown in enough. So I tried to just scrape it off, but it's just too much work. And I don't want to like create a lot of scratch mark in the rock. So ultimately I think um, the GSP won. Basically it, at this point it's beyond my control. I mean, obviously I can still swap the whole rock out, but I think it just, the ending will be the same. You know, they're just gonna start crawling on it. I cannot beat it back. At the same time, um, I know I could maybe plant some like frog spawn and stuff along the perimeters and that's not the aesthetic I'm looking for. So maybe there will be some, it'll, it'll, I think it'll look nice too, even though uh, we have GSP all over, the, all over the rock. But I'll try to make a stand when they try to hop onto the next rock up. Because of this rock, I can actually take pull this piece out and uh, frag things back or calp them. But at the moment, I think the GSP has won. I'm just gonna let it grow, let, let it take over. I think there's some kind of beauty in the control chaos as well. A lot of you guys have caught it. The GSP gonna hop on the rock and it's gonna go out of control. You guys are absolutely right. In the back of my mind, I feel like that is absolutely a possibility as well, which is proven. The GSP has won. The GSP is gonna take over this rock. I'm just gonna let them do it. Let them do a thing. Let nature does its course. Because even if I have so much trouble fragging them back here, there's no way. I actually try a little bit. There's no way if you swing around and look under the rock. Let's come over here. Look at the bottom of the arch. I try to scrape it back a little bit. Um, and the, the grove is too new, so they don't come out as a mat. But by the time that portion comes out as a mat, uh, there's already a new portion a little bit further up, so it'll be too late. So at this point, I'm just gonna let it go, let it go wild, and I'll try to keep it contained onto, on that rock. Uh, we'll see how it goes. I mean, if these GSP started taking over these Zoas, I'm just gonna frag them off the rock and move the Zoas. So we'll go from there and see how it goes. All right, so you may be wondering, what do I do with the frags? So today we got two nice flat peas. I'm gonna use some uh, super glue. 
Okay. So you just kind of glue them to the back. So really simple, straightforward. Uh, no problem putting super glue on corals typically. So one key thing is to make sure you get them on the edges, otherwise they're gonna lift off of the water flow and they're not gonna stick. And it's gonna slowly peel off. There you go. There we go. Not the most graceful way to do it, but it works. Okay. I would like to get that to the bottom, but it may be kind of tough. since the uh, little plugs are not really spreading. So let's introduce another piece right here. In terms of like GSP care and stuff like that, that was it. Super hardy corals that looks great, but as you can see, they can be really invasive. But if you have a, a good handle of them, keeping them on their own island, totally GSP is cool. Or if you really like a GSP only tank, like what this tank may turn out to be in the future, go for it. They're beautiful, they're hardy, uh, they're always in demand. You can either give them away or sell them for a decent price. So. Not a bad core to have actually, not a bad problem to have. Alright guys. Can you sing that? let it go before you end? sing the what? Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. <laughs> let the GSP just take over your tank. Just let it go. <laughs> See you guys next week. Yay! Going to that meeting? In two, uh, in two yeah, weeks. yeah, in two weeks. Yeah. So, you guys going to the meeting? Yeah.